<laughs> oh, well, this is a perfect way to start our final <laughs> green quarantine of 2020. Here we are. <laughs> over 25 later. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us. Um, and of course, uh, we, we have a fantastic way to uh, end the year all together here. So uh, for those of us who are new, welcome. I'm Molly Braverman, she, her, the director of the Broadway Green Alliance. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome our panel for today. And I'm going to give a little sneak that you want to stick around until the end because we are ending our final Green Quarantine of the Year with a fantastic performance from A.Y. Young live here for us. So we got that. So hang in there. Um, so it is my pleasure again to introduce our panel. We have Megan Finn, who is the Artistic Director of The Tank. Um, and you will learn all about the incredible Dark Fest and Trash Fest that they produce. We have A.Y. Young, who is the founder of Battery Tour. And I'm gonna read this to get it right. One of the 2020 United Nations World Youth Leaders, uh, the only one representing the United States. So it is an honor to have you here with us. And moderating this discussion is the one and only Laurel Harris, who is joining us on her birthday today for this conversation. You have seen her as Elphaba in Wicked, and she is the green captain uh, in the current production of Jagged Little Pill. So we are so lucky to have all three of you here. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, Laurel. Oh, sorry, one housekeeping. If you need closed captions, they are accessible by clicking on that Otter AI link on your upper left-hand corner. If we can help you with any other accessibility needs, please reach out to me or our, our, our assistant director, Chrissy Lineker, you can wave. And if you have questions throughout this, please go ahead and put them in the chat and we will get to them throughout the conversation. Now, yours, Laurel. Thanks, Molly. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be here today with all of you talking about how we can save our beautiful planet. Oh my gosh, because she's so lovely. Um, uh oh, we got an Ivy hair tie here. Attachment, great. Um, I hope everyone's doing well and staying healthy and enjoying the holiday season as much as possible, but uh, just so honored to be here uh, talking with all of you and with Broadway Green Alliance. Um, I am the green captain of Jagged Little Pill and was the green captain of a little show called In Transit, um, which is a really cool acapella show. Um, and I was proudly a company member of Wicked for a very long time. So love the green, have always loved green, anything green, really. Um, but most importantly, I'm just so happy to be here with A.Y. Young and Megan Finn, um, and I can't wait to hear more about everything that y'all are doing with sustainable energy and sustainable resources um, and how you're implementing that into your theater. So again, I'm Laurel Harris. My pronouns are she, her, and um, let's start with A.Y. If you could just introduce yourself, um, give your pronouns, and a little bit of introduction of your organization. Yeah, what's up? You're awesome. By the way, that was the coolest Zoom slide pre-show thing I've ever seen. It was really cool. Well done. Well done, right. BGA. That was so good. Shout out to those guys, whoever they are. Yo, but I'm AY. It's nice to be here. Um, I'm founder of the Battery Tour. I mean, uh, you know, the Battery Tour is like a renewable energy power platform. And, you know, we, we helped promote, to develop, to deploy sustainable solutions to people you know, that, that, that need access to energy around the world. Uh, you know, I've powered over 800 concerts w using renewable energy and brought at energy access to over 17 countries. So I'm happy to be here to help get the world plugged in, to inspire people to be an outlet for, for change, to achieve the sustainable goals of the world. Um, so that's what I'm here for. And yeah, pronouns uh, he, him, I guess, work perfectly. Just call me a Y. <laughs> A-Y. I love it. Thank you, A-Y. Megan, if you could introduce yourself, your pronouns, and talk a little bit about what you do. Sure. My name is Megan Finn. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm honored and humbled to be here with all of you today. Um, I really um, admire um, all of your work around uh, all of these uh, issues. My name is Megan. As I said, I'm the Artistic Director of The Tank. We are a nonprofit arts presenter and producer. Our mission is to remove the economic barriers from the creation of new work by emerging artists. Um, we work with uh, over 2,000 artists a year from our home on 36th Street. We have two theaters. Um, 
and we're just a little just a little south of, of Broadway. Um, and, uh, and since, uh, since March, when we've closed, we've kind of shifted our programming kind of almost immediately overnight. We started doing virtual programming on, we closed on the 13th and started on the 17th and, and the artists all kind of came together and, and founded, um, Cyber Tank, which is our virtual platform. Um, and since, uh, since March, we've done 280, performances with the work of wow. two, over 2,101 artists um, on our platform. And so it's it's been a wild ride that none of us thought we would be in, but there's a lot of hope and um, and um, inspiring, inspiring artists working together to, to continue to make, make work. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. I know. Well, one thing about this year really is just, it's forcing us to be even more creative than we ever thought possible. And in some ways, creating new opportunities that, again, we never would have even thought about having if, there, if we weren't put into this situation. So that's incredible. 2,000 artists. Whew. Um, props. Major props. <laughs> I, I wanted to give a shout out. I see here Molly gave a shout out to Lauren. Is it Mandras or Mandras? Mandras? Yeah! Mandras. BJ, yeah. Mandras. BGA intern for creating those slides that AY was talking about at the beginning of the show. So thank you so much. And I want to encourage y'all, if you have any specific questions, I'll be checking the chat so you can type them into the chat and we'll get to those um, throughout this uh, fun conversation as well. Um, so, next question, um, I want to ask AY and Megan, what has helped y'all to stay motivated and empowered, um, <clears throat> just really inspired in your fight for sustainable, <clears throat> excuse me, and your fight for a sustainable future uh, through the arts? So, what are, what are the types of things that have kept you, kept you going, kept you motivated to really fight for sustainable energy through theater and music? Whoever wants to start. I'll let her go. Just go on. Okay. I mean, I think for me, um, it's really the artists themselves. Uh, we, uh, we, when we're in our kind of proper space, have work with a resource sharing model. So our artists are given a lot of emerging artists who are new to New York City have their first show at the tank because we don't charge artists for use of the space and we're able to provide them um, resources to help produce work. So um, we're, we're, the way in which we use resources is kind of um, we, innately <laughs> community driven, which relies on sharing of resources. So um, when, for instance, when we're, if we're heating and cooling a space that that's of use, it's never sitting empty. Um, it's, it's always maximize, maximizing our use of the things that we have on hand to be able to eliminate waste and create a more sustainable model for, for emerging work. So um, I think cool. I, I'm, I'm most inspired by them. That's really nice. cool. Wow. Yeah, and for me, yeah, I mean, I always say the people, right? You know, I, we always used to talk about like, the back towards like for the people, by the people, with the people. But if you go back to when, you know, I, I discovered, I kind of like obsessed over energy stores. I got off a TV show called X Factor, wanted to say hey to the world, wanted to do, you know, it was originally just like, how can I power a concert anywhere? And I figured out energy is a base resource and you can store energy and, and enough of it, you know, to do anything, right? And so, you know, started you know, doing these, these 18 hour concerts. And, you know, uh, you know, one day I'm looking back and there's batteries. I'm like, oh, this is the battery tour, right? And then people would donate, you know, here's $5, here's $10, you know, here, we're your outlets, we power the tour. And, and, and I realized collectively when you're, when you're bringing people together of all ages, all demographics, all tax brackets, right? It's like, you know, to, uh, you know we're, we're all outlets for change mm -hmm. and plugged into each other, like locally, you know, regionally as humans, you know, together, you know, we can really do anything, right? And so, you know, what's inspired me is is is, is the people, you know, and, and going from city to state, city to city and state to state, and you know, you know, battery tour being a platform for other artists and other businesses or like-minded individuals or activists or movement, and it, and it's, it's people, right, that powered uh, the battery tour, and and, and uh, that's what's inspired me. 
That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, there is, it's all about connection, right, and human, human connection, and that we are 50th cousins or less <laughs> on this planet. We are all related. And, and just that, that reminder that it, we can all participate, and we should all be participating in sustaining our environment and, and taking care of our planet as much as we can, because obviously this is all we have, and it's that it should be, a, it's all we have. Hello? And, it, and it, should be, it should be affordable, it should be accessible to everybody. Um, so I, I really appreciate everything that you've done. And I was wondering if you can talk a little bit more specifically about what the battery tour is and just share that with folks. Um, how you use renewable energy through the battery tour and, and what, what exactly is that? How would you describe it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it has so many functionalities, but I think it's safe to say that the battery tour is a platform. I'm, I'm a person, I'm a human. My name's AY, right? I'm not the battery tour, but I found it, it right? But I, I love music and entertainment and, and using uh, music as a vehicle because it's, it's a universal language, you know, to connect to people and drive like my message or the sustainability message as a whole. But battery tour, like the, the, the organization, you know, it's like a platform. It's, it's a, a way to connect, engage, educate, right? It's, it's this uh, hub of sustainability like that. And it's, it's growing and evolving, right? But it's just like this hub of sustainability that obviously physically in the past and, and will continue to be as we get out of this, this uh, virus thing, right? Will be, it's obviously fully powered by renewable energy events, concerts, right? Uh, obviously concert functions because it can host artists, right? You know, it's also a platform, like I said, for activists etc. It's a place where companies uh, that have a sustainable toothbrush or uh, other solutions can promote them, right? Can, uh, we can almost help develop it and then ultimately deploy, you know, that to people that need it. So it's become all of these things. Of course, digitally, it's a way to connect and educate and, and engage as well, right? And, and really just achieve sustainability. That's why I call it that. Uh, and of course, I, I feel like I'm the plug for Battery Tour, but for sustainability in general. I, obviously, I'm the driving force of what's kept it alive and, and growing it. But now as it grows and as more and more talented people plug in, and as we have that wider reach of getting the world plugged in, right? Not just, not just to renewable energy, but uh, just plugged in can mean a lot of things. Educated, right? Plugged in together to work together, you know? So, I mean, all of this, I think, is what has put me in the position to now be a young leader and then be able to now unleash what, what which I can't wait to talk about later or whatever, but like a real, I think a, a, a three phase kind of project to really uh, achieve the, the global goals of the world. So, yeah. Cool. Wow. Changing the world. What are these 18 hour concerts that you're talking about? I was like, well, what? 18, you... eight. <laughs> <laughs> I would die if it was 18. Holy I know that was a long time too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said 18 hour concert. With the Megan, said, yeah, what? yeah, I'll work by. No, eight. No, no, no. Well, we'll see. When I started the battery tour, I started doing eight hour concerts, and people were like, oh my God, that's so long. What's who does that? But I was like looking at Taco Bell, and like Wendy's, and it's like, if you work there, you got to do a four hour shift minimum. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was like, you know, I'm going to do music, you know, I was like, well, eight hours to me was, was minimum. So, you know, I'd store wow. enough energy and I'd start, you know, I picked a white girl that was a singer and an a, a, a African dude that was a dancer and a Latin guy that could play the guitar. And I was trying to pick what I thought was America, right? You know, where, where they could show that, you know, it's all ages, all demographics, all tax, you know, tax brackets. So I would, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a way to, to plug in plug in people right so that's uh that's awesome uh, sweet that's oh wow uh, 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 eight hours i can't imagine i'm like <clears throat> the vocal cords would be quite tired for one person to do that but i love that you're included uh, yeah it's uh, like uh, what we want america truly to look like right and and just celebrating or that. Hum humanity in general right i mean exactly. it's, it's a collective of the every planet. size shape and color right and it's going to take all of us and all these organizations from what Megan you're doing, like uh, all, you know, plugged into each other. From what the water side's doing, from what the building environment's doing, the energy, the the uh, you know the utility companies and music and entertainment, which is one of the most mm -hmm. powerful vehicles, you know, connected to achieve these advancements. Totally. 
Wow. Um, well, yes, I want to bounce it to you, Megan, now. Um, and if you could talk about Dark Fest and just tell us about that, um, that you pioneered in, in 2018, that incredible festival, and share with us what, you know, sort of how you incorporate renewable energy into Dark Fest and, and what, what that is. Sure. So Dark Fest is one of our summer festivals, um, and we uh, challenge the artists to create new pieces without completely without the use of our grid. So they have to come up with re, uh, sustainable solutions for power and and create new works of art. We've had you know bicycle power generators that have powered a whole show, or um, we've had. Uh, um, people like my <laughs> LED headlamps uh, for setting the scene for a, a show that was miners that were stuck in a mine and um, incredible choreography. I mean, the, the, I feel like the choreography that I've seen out of Dark Fest is, is always com intensely compelling. I think that what happens is you kind of boil things down to the essential elements of performance, right? Audience, performer, the very sim simple things that you need to be able to um, communicate with your body. And, and, um, and so, yeah, so it always, we challenge the artists and they always come up with these incredible ideas. Um, and it's, uh, so it's a, it's a multi-year festival that we've been doing um, for some time now. Actually, we started it a little bit before it's 2018, but, um, uh, but I think we've been working with y'all for, with, with it for, um, for around that time but uh but yeah it's always a really exciting time now this year of course we didn't have our theaters so we kind of said oh well what are we going to do because we did program our other um our other festivals we have we always do an annual uh uh pride fest festival and a festival um, which was formerly known as lady fest which this year we started calling lime fest um to try to make it more inclusive but um and so you know we we were we were kind of curious about how what we would make so instead of this year um of dark fest we we created a trash fest um which was which was a new challenge for the artists to think about the relationship to waste the waste that they put into the world um the relationship be between their art and waste and um that manifested in some uh visual art pieces short form comedy music um, and yeah, so we had a, we had a great lineup this year for Trash Fest. So that was our, that was our answer. And so that was both something that people experienced in the world where they could go and see an installation. Um, and, uh, or they, or it was, it was experienced via cyber tank. Um, I'll actually, I don't know how to share this, but if you go to our website, um, uh, the tank nyc.org slash trash fest. You can see you can see the the different pieces that folks that folks did this year. Um, and one challenge, one one thing we said was you have to use all you have whatever you use has to be trash. So you That's have so to dope. You have to make I everything. Love that. Out of it, so That's super tight. Wow. So the tank nyc dot org. Yes. yes. Slash trash. I think fest. you slash trash fest. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. I think you can share your screen if you wanted to, but maybe we can we can oh yeah thank you Chrissy I was gonna say let's throw it in the chat we'll throw it in the we'll chat uh, you can do that um and Me can I awesome. ask Megan Megan were you you're using yeah, please, pedal no. generators right pedal generators you guys were store like storing energy and then powering the the for one of the dark or the yeah for one of the dark them? yeah that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's how I see yeah, yeah. <laughs> who was powering who was pedaling um the one of the performers Oh, so during the performance, are yeah, they incorporated oh, into the cool. performance? <laughs> but oh like, I'm God, ready. I'm good. ready to do the eight-hour concert. So let's talk after this. <laughs> I'm ready for yes. that. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, that's that's ultimately like one of the goals <laughs> later on is like not only do like obviously show people you know what's possible because it 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 it, it, it is you know when, it's funny when I met Al Gore. I met him like a year and a half ago. This was what got me in the climate movement. You know, I, I like shook his hand. I'm like, bro, you're saying good stuff because you know he's saying like. He's saying some dope stuff. And I, I'm like, I, I look back and I'm like, but the big stage, you know, and I'm like, but you're powered by, you know, fossil fuels, you know, like you technically you're destroying the world when talking about saving it, you know? And, and so that got me on this whole tip of like the capability too, of like, what if we could convert the creative economy to a green one, 
you know i've obviously done over 800 close to 900 at this point battery tour you know like you know events powered by renewable wow. energy but but imagine with the right partnership with the right people collective imagine what we could roll out to the theater world i mean yeah what you're talking about is like what i have right over there i have like pedal generators in my in my house right now and and you know simple technology if for anyone who's listening it's i call it human power and you just pedal you can charge your phone we actually send those to people around the world you know because in villages they pay for their food with their phone but they just need like you know access to energy but on a on a more massive scale like how could we that that this is cool i would love to talk to you after this is like how can you engage the audience but then also maybe that that actual uh, theater setup is is not using a diesel generator like let's let's take the world to the the next paradigm shift right and where what we should be doing <laughs> yeah and is there a world where the audience is creating the energy you know is there a world where the audience the full cycle yeah. show the yeah, deep exactly. full cycle show right where where people are, oh people are participating in it you know yeah. well that's that human energy we all awesome. can do that though you can mind yeah I, 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 I don't know where my pedals are. I can, I'll bring them in in the frame. But yeah, you can pedal and and pow and charge and store it. It's si it's simple to do it. You know, wow. it's not that hard. <laughs> well, <laughs> Ay, you were talking about meeting Al Gore, and I wanted to <laughs> touch on again that um, you uh, became one of the 2020 United Nations World Youth Leaders, the only one yeah. from the U.S., which again is just like absolutely incredible. I can't believe that we're That's getting to crazy, talk to you today. Dude. Um, and so was that, is that where you got to meet Al Gore? And no, no, I, no, I met him before. Like he, he okay. led me to, to even be in the U. Okay. So, you know, I met Al Gore cause he has something called climate reality or something like you guys look it up. He, he talks about climate. I went there and then I met, I, you know, I, I don't know how I got to meet him in person, but I did shook his hand and, and, you know, and that was my, one of my Eureka moments after. Uh, you know, doing this battery tour so long and, and, and I've opened for with Khalifa, Shaggy, all this stuff. I've done all this stuff, but I had discovered that there's over a billion people that don't have access to energy. That led me to New York, which I can't wait to come visit again because I got people to meet now, Megan. And th there's something called <laughs> Climate Week. And I know she knows what the Climate Week's crazy, all these climate people to come together, organizations. And so after, after leaving Al Gore, I was like, okay, well, Coldplay said they want to tour sustainably. Why are they not powered by a battery tour? And in my mind, I'm like, Justin, Bieber should be powered by a battery tour tomorrow. And then I Hello? saw Greta Thunberg, who I love, right? And she came on the ship and they were like, oh my God, you know, he's, she's, he's coming on the ship to save energy and, you know, see all this stuff. And then I saw her speaking and I looked behind and I saw she was plugged into a generator, a diesel generator, which means you're technically destroying the world while, while talking about saving it. So I just started powering speeches and panels. Next thing I know, I, I'm in the United Nations uh, you know, in the, in the actual like room, right. And, and I, I was able to showcase the battery tour to like some of these like couple of like, world leaders or whatever. And then I met this guy named Paul Hawk and he wrote a book called project drawdown. And he's like, check it out. It's called project drawdown. Just put that into your search bar, Paul Hawk. And he like wrote the manual on sustainability. He like became my mentor and like a second dad to me. And he, I, I remember he hit me up cause he's like, I nominated you for this thing. I didn't know what the freak it was. And then I, when I looked into it, you and were, you know, young leaders, like 18,000 nominations in like a hundred and something countries, 90 something countries. I'm like, nah, you know, this is, this is, not, I'll never win anything, bro. But um, <laughs> yeah, then I actually, I'm freaking, and it's so crazy. Like the, to be the young leader and the only one in America, I'm like, holy crap. Like that's a lot of shoes to feel. But um, I think that I'm really happy of what the project is. And I actually, I can't, I, maybe on this podcast, I'll announce what I'm actually doing for my two year uh, work plan. Uh, what, what is a two year appointment. And I, and I think I have a way to get the world plugged in. Uh, uh, yes. uh, uh, oh my gosh. I want to hear all about that. Well, how uh, do you, uh, how do you implement talking about, you know, the UN and the UN 17 sustainable development goals? How do you work those into the battery tour? Oh yeah, I mean that's that uh, that's my strategy. So, uh, Megan, what do you know about the goals? Do you know anything about the global goals of the world? I am not going to begin to talk about the global goals. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, you're you, hitting some of them. You were like, no, I know. I, with, you, you, tell, awesome. you tell, you teach me. You teach me. Yeah, well, that's part of why I'm here. I guess I'm supposed to freaking tell people about the goals. But um, Thank yeah, you. Seven, yeah, if you like, if you like. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> She's helped me check my boxes. <laughs> Thanks, Lo. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, we're Lo. just quizzing you. We're making sure. We need to so be educated. If, right? If, if, if you put in the chat box, I can't do this, but you type like globalgoals.org, you know, like, or just like Google global goals. You'll see like, you know, 17, you know, it's like a color palette, no hunger, you know, uh, gender equality, all this stuff, right? And so, you know, actually, it's, it's funny because like the UN's like, AY is the first artist ever to power all of his concerts with renewable energy. So I thought to myself, like, what the heck am I going to do, right? Like, of course, everyone's expecting me to do a tour. Everyone's expecting me to do an album. So I'll tell you what it is. I'll, I'll tell you the information on what we're doing. We're launching January the 1st. I'm going to do an album. And the idea is this, to work, which is why Meg and I can't wait for us to talk more. And, and, and so uh, to you as well. Um, like my, the idea is like to work with the best the world has to offer, you know, in every facet of humanity, whether that's the biggest and best TikTokers and influencers, YouTubers, Instagrammers, companies and corporations, especially those, you know, obviously that believe in uh, social responsibility, right? You know, nonprofits, uh, NGOs, right? And of course, entertainers and artists, you know, uh, entertainment, you know, so uh, uh, to achieve the global goals of the world, those 17 goals, right? So I'm going to do an album. 17 songs, one song for each goal. And then I'm doing, I'll, I'll do a tour, which you know, it's the battery tour, but the world will know in 2022, 17 dates in the US, you know, cause I'm the young leader of the US. So let's get the whole US plugged in. And then we're gonna release a guidebook and a roadmap through the United Nations to all artists in the creative economy globally to say, hey, hey guys, this is how you, you know, you tour sustainably. This is how you, you know, do make an album sustainably. And, and it's all going to be part of a two-season docu-series uh, on Amazon Prime, uh, Hulu, and Netflix, uh, 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 two seasons, 17 episodes each season, right? And so with that being said, I brought in Brian Kennedy to tell you a little bit more. He's a five-time Grammy winning producer. Uh, and, and, and since then, you know, that day he called Lady Gaga, Bruno Mars. And I mean, since then, it's been Stevie Wonder, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Jaden Smith. We just uh, secured charity water uh, for the water goal, right? We're talking to water.org and Matt Damon next week. Uh, uh, so you see how we're building it out, right? Like, you know, what if you have a record where there's Lady Gaga and like Dolly Parton, right? And myself, right? Because I'm an artist and I make music, it's a collaboration, you know? And then you've got four or five of these organizations that, that advance the goal, the, uh, the, the gender right equality goal. So now you're using music as a vehicle uh, to almost finance the impact, you know, uh, at the same time as working with a corporation or a company that cares about social responsibility and essentially uh, help make it happen, right? So that's the project and that's what we're rolling out <laughs> to change the world, guys. Did you wow. <laughs> I am so excited about this. This is incredible. I, I can't believe Y'all I just said all that. Don't tell my team. <laughs> <laughs> You're in this, you are in a safe space, I assure you. No, I'm saying shoot. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Holy cow, I am so excited. I still can't believe that we have you and Megan here just like sharing all of this gold with us. Because this is what it's about. It's about, yeah. It's happening. It's happening right here. Um, well, Megan, I want to I wanna bounce back to you here and talking about the tank and, you know, just like what your future goals look like with the tank and well, also i wanted to ask you about future goals and also just um how can we promote interconnectivity between i know that the tank does you know it's it's doing theater and music and comedy and dance and film and all of these elements puppetry um different types of storytelling so how can we prom or yeah how can we promote interconnectivity um by linking these disciplines to the work and sustainability. So I know that's kind of a twofold question there, but um, I what are think, your thoughts? Uh, I think that um, we're in this uh, very, I think that we, we can look at this moment, which is at least, uh, I would, I think it's an under, un, a minimizing statement for me to say the, the, the hugest uh, economic hit to the sector in my lifetime. I think it's it's what are we talking like the 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 largest hit to the sector since since what the thirties? I mean the twenties the twenties ever. ever. Um, so 
we're really in this very, uh, I think, t tenuous space uh, as a sector. And I am part of an ecosystem, a cultural ecosystem, and as is my organization, you know, and we're just, we're one piece of it. We're one piece of New York. Um, we're one piece of um, what drives the, the kind of economic engine of this, um, of the arts, arts and culture sector in New York City, which is a, it's part of our identity as a city. It's just, it's part of, um, it's a vital part of, of every, everything <laughs> is connected to people's draw and, and people's coming to, people coming to New York to experience art, art and culture. And so we could, there's plenty to be afraid and, and, and wary of and upset about, but we could also look at this as a reset um, and a, a reset for uh, what the potential is and when, and, you know, when you're talking about these this big these big ideas and these big goals, I think that's the kind of thinking that we will need to get through this. <laughs> and I honestly think that it is it could be key to because it also makes economic sense. <laughs> this is a an opportunity for theaters to look at the ways in which they're they have not been sustainable and and embrace these technologies and just the sim the simple changes that may be may feel epic because in the theater we rely on liveness and the relationship between live performer and audience and so it it is when you make one little change it's like exponential the effect that it has on um, on the on everything in within within each theater and also within the sector in general. So when we say I'm not going to have programs, for instance, or you know, or I'm going to minimize my that waste, then that's multiplied by <laughs> you know thousands and millions. So that's something that we are the tank is a um, microcosm to a larger kind of conversation about shared resources and why we why we have buildings we have ice cold buildings empty buildings <laughs> you know in in the theater why is that the practice you know that that these that are in use for a short amount of time um in a day um and and that's just like a very practical question um but i think that there are hundreds of these questions right now that we can be asking ourselves and that when we have the opportunity to reopen the smarter we are about embracing this like if you tell us today why like how how we can i mean i think when that when you talk about an idea like that it's like deal the theater into that idea <laughs> you know no, i mean it, it yeah. totally is but you have to look at too and i was going to second what you're saying if you think about it like this pandemic should give everyone the opportunity to literally like reevaluate the processes of even the manufacturing of the buildings, right? And and like now we can we we as venue owners as theater production companies down to like evaluating the clothing, the angles of how things are being made. Like I really think instead of all the complaining, and I'm not saying complaining isn't worthwhile complaining, but this is to me it's like, can we do it better and safer? In every facet, do we need to build another amphitheater or do we go find an old building and outfit it or a renovate, right? Like, why do we need another arena? Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, uh. Things like that, you know? Uh, should we do the outfits this way or do we, do we now find out that the clothing and the ink is killing people in Korea and so we care about that as far as humans dying, whether it's our country or not? So maybe we should think of how we design the outfit for the Wicked show coming up differently. And now you have the time to do it because it's not like you can do it right now anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And no, then, you're, you know, go ahead. Go ahead, Laura. No, 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 no. Megan, please go. I was just saying we, we do have this, we do have this kind of space right now too. I mean, there's also, it, it's like, it's an incredibly stressful moment. I mean, I can't, I think about the stress that, that we have had in our little, you know, we're little fish, you know, um, but 
you know, it's a complete, incredibly stressful moment for, for everyone. I think that we can use that though to find exactly what you're saying, find smarter ways to work, find smarter ways to work. I wonder too, Laurel, just as a captain, like how, what were the discoveries that you made in that process? You know, like what, um, what were, what were the aha moments for you? Totally. Well, yeah, I mean, it's really about just like taking that opportunity, right. And like seeing change as an opportunity and something that's, that can be really good and not something that's scary or, um, like we've never done it before, so it might not work and we might lose money. And we, you know, especially in corporate theater on Broadway, there is this fear of, well, we've always done it this way and it's worked. So let's not change it because this is how we're making money. And this is just how it's always been done. And, and this is how we will continue. And let's not question that, you know, and that is such a, first I'm of all, that's why we're, mindset. one of the, Exactly. And that's it's why so we're stupid. at where we are, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it is 2020. We should be so far advanced than where we are. And so, you know, as the green captain, I will introduce these ideas that are so, you know, obvious to everyone here. I mean, I'm speaking to the choir here, but even something as simple as you know, um, introducing the metal straw or just recycling in general. For some people, it's, it's a pain. It's a, it's an inconvenience. And so I would go and there were, I'm not going to say what company this happened in, but I had recycling bins and trash bins on every floor of the theater. And most of the Broadway theaters are several floors um, tall. And I would go in with gloves and like separate the recycling from the trash almost daily and I would give multiple announcements hello people please there's a big green triangle on the recycling bin for where you put your mm -hmm. papers and your plastic and your cans and everything and I think it's just you know especially in the country that we live in which is all about you know me 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 and thinking the individual before the communal and um capitalism hello and quick 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 we're just we're just not thinking we're not thinking about the future generation and we're doing whatever is the most convenient and the quickest and kind of assuming that someone will just always be there to pick up our messes um which, i also think with the artists you know it's it's it, you know to try to maybe also like you know sympathize it's a tough it's a grind right <laughs> like rehearsal process totally. and, like you're, you, it's a lot of like, it's a grind. You're, you're called for long hours. You're, you're working. And there's, there's other conversations about that right now that are mm -hmm. happening about how sustainable that is. Um, but you know, there's, right. so, so often it's like, I just need to take care of, <laughs> to get food in this body so that I can send it back out. Yes, of course. Um, so, I mean, I think we're starting to recognize that the system was built and you said capitalism, that's a wonderful word, because if you, if you look at how it was designed, it was designed, it's like when people talk about social media, you know, when you talk to the people that designed it, they'll say that they, des we, well, we designed social media so we could get money from the, from the companies that for ads, right? They did, you know, they wanted the ad money and how, how can we give you uh, a guarantee that that million dollars reaches X amount of people? That was why they designed it. Like they, you design a basketball to do this. You design a shovel to shovel, right? It was designed for that. So you can, you can use a shovel in 50 other ways. You can go take a basketball and play baseball, but it was designed for a purpose. So, you know, mm -hmm. as people talk, reference social media, it wasn't really designed to connect and benefit humanity. It was designed to make companies money. And it's doing well, right? So if you looking at the design of like how now we're really starting to notice that, wow, like even how I consume food, it was designed to, you know, capitalism is designing our system. So it's funny because I talk about localism, right? It's actually what we need more than anything. And so now when you see the system shutting down more, it's like, oh, now you want to talk about, well, now, you know, urban farming, local farming, local this, but it matters. Like that's, that's more of we. It's, it's almost like we're, we're almost still caught in this weird matrix and realizing that, wait a second, this system wasn't made for me. I, I'm not supposed to just sit in a cubicle nine to five every day, all day and like lose my soul on a screen. Like maybe I can work remotely and see my family more. Huh? Huh? And right, exactly. Yeah, and I think yeah. 
And yeah, I think yeah. actors, you know, particularly, I, I feel for, you know, I, the very first, my very first impulse was when we closed in March, I got to take care of these artists. I wrote the statement. It was a Facebook post. It was just, it was like a message to the artist. And, and then I, it ended up being in American theater as like a, a like note about quarantine, but it was like, right. take care of yourselves right now. This is the, we need something else from your body right now. We need something else from your heart. You need to be generous with yourself because it's going to hurt to not be doing what you love. It's so right, There wasn't hard. an outlet. There's no outlet. It's like, it's mm -hmm. so, and, but we've learned something. And I think that the artists will, are, ha, there's a teachable moment right now too, that can, that can be driven towards sustainability where artists, we are thinking in the theater so much more about the impact that our individual body has on another person. Mm -hmm. Just our breath. Crazy, right? Just the yep. energy in the room. And it so all matters, right? So, we have so. that connection, and not all of us are feeling it, unfortunately. And that's mm -hmm. sad. And that's creating a lot of pain. But the fact that we can hold on to that, well, then, then we understand an impact between what, between I didn't put my recycling in and I did, or I did. Mm -hmm. I wore a mask or I didn't. You know, mm -hmm. it's, so it, I, it's like, it's just, it might, it's just a little shift, but we're, we're experiencing it so profoundly in the theater right now, all of us, that I think we can have these conversations, especially when they make economic sense. I think they're right. going to help us in the long run. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, this pandemic is forcing us to think about the collective. It's, you wear your mask for somebody else. So yes, the hope is that we can translate our care for each other as humans to the planet, which is all encompassing because we are all on this on this planet so it should be all mesh, meshed and melded together and i think too you know we as as the artists and green captains we can do a lot in raising our voices in terms of saying like we need we need this we need lights that go off automatically in the dressing rooms we need more leds we you know and talking about this but it it also really relies on the the producers and the um, theater owners to be willing to have those conversations and it's really like a league Broadway league um, conversation which I, I know are happening but I hope that we like we're all saying we, we can't go back to the way that it was before for multiple reasons you know um, culturally racially environmentally it, it's got to be it, it, it can't it wasn't working so back to normal is not acceptable and so my hope is that, you know, and the tank, like what y'all are doing, you are setting this example of how it is possible to use renewable energy and sustainable resources to run a theater. And so my hope is that bigger corporate theaters, especially companies that have already recouped over and over and over again, will see this as an opportunity and say, wow, well, I know that it's different and it's, it's uncomfortable because it's not what we've always done, but perhaps we can actually contribute to what we believe as as individuals and perhaps what our show is saying in terms of like really caring about humanity and caring about the future and let's let's practice what we're preaching on stage and the message that we're giving on stage and follow yeah. through with that off stage and if there and, was some so, tax incentives or you know like as we move forward what like what the plan is for infrastructure and these and and what the opportunities are going to be around renewable energy so Incentives could be great, and see that's going to be some some top down stuff, right? Because there's some yeah. top down mm -hmm. stuff that. But what what I what I want to say and why I'm hopeful and why I'm happy, you know, uh, is is because I, I always talk about it's about one action, one step every day, right? I talked about I made a song called Creep Creep, and this is how I got here because when you say this dude did 800 concerts, I I did over 800. I, mean, I did 230 last year, and, and they a lot of them weren't in the venue. It was rolling up to a place or a space or a park and setting up my own concert. I'm not privileged, uh, I'll say privileged, definitely honored, like some artists that can just show up to a stage that's set up. And then they grab a mic and go perform. And then they leave in an hour. I had to set it up, tear it down, put it back into the car, charge, right? But uh, <laughs> I was taking a step every day. And so what I'm hearing from you, you know, Laurel, uh, is you're taking a step and see, that's what it takes. You start taking steps, now there's a recycling can. I think more steps and now who's this and I'm seeing the steps happening and that's hopefully when you get the bigger 
corporations or, or, or entities or collections, collectives to start taking a step. You know, that's mm -hmm. what it takes every day. And that's why I say everyone's an outlet because so many people go, you know, well, well what can I do? Well, we all can do something. <laughs> well, I think I, I'm going to jump in for one sec just because that that's everything you're saying is so relevant to the work that we've been doing uh, all season in green quarantine and all together the AY I love the the phrase you're using everyone's an outlet the BGA we say everyone can be greener right that that this idea that we have to be this perfect green this perfect environmentalist throw it out the door no one is that but each one of us at all these different levels, being green is accessible, right? Anyone yeah. can enter using whatever their particular talent or passion is. Um, and, Ooh, that's and, good. Well said. and absolutely. Uh. And speaking to this idea of reopening greener, Chrissy put in the link, Monday, we launched a reopening greener toolkit. Um, that's part that, that has suggestions and tools. And again, and entry points for everyone. You don't, you know, the producer, electrician, wardrobe, stage manager, star actor, doesn't matter. Everyone has an entry point in. And, and I love how you talk about setting up and tearing down that concert yourself. I think we can all relate to that moment. And, um, and it's doable. You're just doing it. So cheers to you. Exactly. You. Yes. Thanks, Molly. I know that that toolkit. I'm so excited to learn more about that. And yeah, BGA is doing this work and has been for a long time. So thank you. And I wanted to just um, quick in the chat here. Um, first of all, yes, Susan, we can never go back to it before. I love it. Did it. Um, <laughs> but uh, two quick questions for you, Megan. This is going back to um, when you were talking about pedal generation. Uh, someone was asking if that was actually part of the plot, part of the piece, yes, or part of the, it was a performer. Uh, and it was part of it was incorporated in the piece and i want to see a whole festival of that maybe that'll be next to what we do i know i <laughs> love i try to that sorry day yeah. is like well we have dark yeah. fest so we'll we'll still continue to get the creative solutions but maybe we should just do pedal fest like just like <laughs> this spring you know if, if if we can get out there after march you know in the streets that's what they're saying we can possibly do you're gonna need a lot of you're gonna need a lot of people pedaling though <laughs> I'm telling you, can't we'll, wait. Do, we'll do our hybrid, our like performance, our Soul Cycle spinoff, literally. Uh, and, <laughs> I love it. And uh, um, yeah, anyway. And also, how long is Dark Fest each year? Um, it takes it. It has varied over the years. Um, I think it's it's usually uh, uh two two to three weeks. Cool. Okay, great. Um, we're. I could talk to y'all. I'm sure you, everyone here is enjoying this conversation so much. I'm like, I wish we had another hour. Uh, we only have a few more minutes. So I'm just going to ask each of you um, one more question. And then we actually, we have a special performance from AY and I'm so excited. We got a preview Hopefully of it before y'all came on. Zoom. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be perfect. Um, but let's see. Um, let's start with you, Megan. Just how do you... I, how do you envision a future? Um, I know we've talked about this a little bit, but for where where you would like the tank to go, and also other productions in terms of ut utilizing renewable energy sources, what is your what is your dream and goal? Um, and also, how can people find you uh, and you know get involved with your with your uh, production company? Sure. So you can find us at uh, thetanknyc.org. You can uh, follow us at the Tank NYC. Um, I think that like what what my hope for the tank is that uh, my big hope is that we go return <laughs> to our home, um, which we which we are on on track to do. But I think uh, along the lines of all the things that we've been talking about, um, really we're with all the work that kind of internal work we've been doing, looking at the ways that we can be even more efficient. Um, uh, we we kind of the way that we can um, be sharing materials, um, the kind of thing things that AY was talking about. Um, having that, ha having a, a sh we have can, we have a like consciousness about like wood, for instance, and you know hardware and and that and those and those things. But how can we expand expand that into things like yeah costumes and thinking creatively about how we're um, how we're working together because we work with so many different companies and they're coming in the space um 
it's it's really people are focused on like showtime because that's how we are that's how we are i mean that's also like we don't have to beat ourselves up about that you know because <laughs> that's those are the people we are and this is what we've chosen to do but when you're only focused on showtime the like the the lead up is like i gotta get the thing done and then the after is that i did it so changing that so that it's like how am i getting this done in a way that makes this more sustainable and then once it's made and it's time to move on how am i then sharing what i have made so that it can be created into something new um and so yeah so i think that's my goal for the tank i want to take a really small moment to just shout out um, Superhero Clubhouse as just a resource. They're an incredible company. Maybe they've been on already and I just didn't know this. But um, Superhero Clubhouse, and they also have workshops that you can take um, to, uh, to work and, and discover how to create more sustainable art practice. Um, and so I just wanted to shout out them. Um, and then I also wanted to shout out my, um, the producer of Trash Fest, Anthony Dean, who was really so incredible when we, when we were closed and didn't know how we were gonna make this festival. And I, and, it was like, we both got a mischievous look on our faces and said, trash fest? So, <laughs> very exciting. So, I love um, trash fest. Yeah. That's the best word ever. Um, but the trash fest has also, like, has wanted to be, like, monthly, you know, um, has wanted to be, like, a, so that is another goal once we're back to make it, like, something that we're doing ongoing. So. Very cool. Thanks so much, Megan. And AY, yeah, just kind of a, a sum up of your you know, goals for the future in terms of battery tour. I know that you've talked about some of them, but really, you know, how also would you encourage people to get involved in the climate movement um, through the arts? And uh, we have a question in the chat, if, if people can volunteer, if there's a way to get involved outside of your core team specifically. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and then we're going to really, we're going to like launch a new battery tour site that's literally just for you to plug into. Cause like, again, it's all about like, it's the battery tour is an outlet to plug in to your passion, you know? So like whether you're an artist, whether you're a filmmaker, whether you're a video, you know, photographer, we want you guys to plug in. So, uh, and I think you can go to the website now and like subscribe, you know, like be on the email list. So I, I would like do that because it's in a lot of changes. But that being said, my vision for the future, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. You like look around my room and, I, you know, it's funny. I, I say like, because people will send pictures of like an outlet, you know, they'll send an outlet like in their home or their gym or something like, hey, the battery tour is here. You know what I'm saying? Like literally like from, you know, from like the actual, you know, and that's when I, I realized that the battery tour is like, you know, it's already in every home in America, you know, it's already in every, every gym. So, you know, I'm ready uh finally <laughs> uh thanks to now having the u.n behind me and you know uh, secretary general guterres and and the youth envoy and i'm ready to to uh help inspire you know the world uh of outlets to to, to recognize that they are and and get them plugged in so i'm really ready to get the world plugged in and that's my future goal so what's up guys let's, oh. let's do it well, thank you. Yes. Another reminder, you know, like we're saying here is everyone is an outlet. Everyone has an opportunity. It's right there in your own home, like AY says. So it's all about plugging in literally and just, you know, being a part of the change, being a little bit greener and, uh, and just doing your best one by one. We will all make a difference and collectively have a, a better and brighter future for sure. So I just want to thank y'all again, AY and Megan, so much for sharing with us all of the, these gold nuggets of information and inspiration. And again, for Broadway Green Alliance for organizing this, um, Molly and Chrissy and um, the beautiful intern who, Lauren, who did the slideshow. Um, and yeah, AY is going to lead us out with a piece uh, of his. So. Thank you so much, everyone, again, for joining. And AY, take it away. Oh, from Zoom, guys. Hey, thank you so much. This was super awesome. Let's hopefully it sounds good here. There we go. Hey, let's save the planet, guys. Together. Hey, save the planet. We gon' save the planet. Everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet. Save the planet. We gon' save the planet, everybody looking at me like I'm from another planet. Save the planet, 
We gon' say the play by the Broadway, guys. You guys rock. Morel, man, it was great. It was great, Megan. I, I love meeting you. Save the planet. They, they acting like we from another planet, Mars. They say climate change ain't a thing. What you talking about? What you know about that? What's your carbon offset? Facts. We just wanna act. We ain't sitting back. Solar power. Wind and solar power, everybody need the energy, let's store it up in power. The world recycle, we need more recycle, but y'all acting like some followers on Instagram and Twitter. It's tick tock, the ball drop, the clock starts now, plug in. Phenomenal. Thank you again to Laurel and Megan, all of you for joining us here today. That's a wrap on Green Quarantine 2020. We will be back in January. We're going to kick it off with Dr. Sonali McDermott talking about the climate impacts on our global food system. And before then, join us next week, Friday on the 18th, for your Mean One, Mr. Finch. It is a holiday benefit concert for the BGA and a celebration of all of the work that all of you have been a part of this year. So we hope to see you then. All right. Until then, everyone, take care. <laughs>